This episode of Local Film Talk was recorded in the green room at Natty Green's in downtown Raleigh. Perfect for business meetings or just joining friends to watch the big game, the green room is the ideal place to host your next event. To learn more, contact David Crack at 919-232-2477 or email david at nattygreens.com. Get on your case, but I'm worried. I wish I could soar. I wish I could. Welcome everybody to Local Film Talk. We're in the green room at Natty Greens in downtown Raleigh talking with Evan Kidd, uh, director of the short film Displacement Welcomed. Yep. So give us a, a brief summary of what the film is about. Yeah, um, Displacement Welcomed is a 16 minute short film and it stars Avery Hobbs and April Vickery, two really cool NC local actors. And uh, basically the premise of the film is a young girl returns home to kind of look into the disappearance of her father. She'd been studying abroad. Her father goes missing for a reason that's later revealed. And uh, basically while she's there, she is trying to sort the affairs when she actually meets a homeless woman. Mm -hmm. And the whole premise of the film is this weird friendship slash, you know, relationship thing that occurs between these two women and you know, how they deal with one another and similar problems, different problems that arise throughout the course of a day. So, mm -hmm. so how did you come up with the idea for this? Um, more or less the idea was uh, just more out of observation at first. That's kind of how I develop a lot of ideas for films. I mean, just mm -hmm. kind of combination of life experience and things I'm seeing, whether it's, you know, in the real world or on, online and the media, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, more or less the film really was born out of the concept of seeing, like, tons of homeless people. I went to Las Vegas and that was a really eye-opening experience. Oh, yeah. There's just lots of homeless people in that area and it's a population that I think a lot of people don't really know what to do for or with. You know, people don't know the best way to kind of deal with homelessness and you know, you look at it and you say, you know, well, I can give them some money and mm -hmm. give them some food, but at the end of the day, what does that solve? Well, in um, a lot of days, you don't even know why right, they're homeless. Right. You know, a lot of times being able to help with right. the problem depends on Right. what the problem is in well, the first see, and place. And that's the thing, a lot of people don't really know, and I'm not saying I know some grand answer, I mean, it's, I don't, but like making the film was kind of a way to help me process some of those you know, mm -hmm. thoughts and emotions I had on that subject. And um, you know, making the film was really interesting because we kind of got to delve into a you know, subculture of America that's always been there, but a lot of people don't know what it's about. Right. And so um, the way I approached it was I wanted to write a film that dealt with characters that you know one are underrepresented and two are not what you normally see in a film right. um, the film stars two female leads first and foremost which is something that you know that's out of the very, ordinary yeah very few films do and the few that do are either kind of a you know off b movie cold about you know the cheerleading vampire hunter with a crossbow mm -hmm. or it's kind of a chick flick where you know her main goal in the film is to like get married or you know do something mm -hmm. that is to please a man so that's kind of something interesting I wanted to delve away from mm -hmm. and just make these characters you know two female characters that interact with each other just because they have an interest in one another not nothing great grand or insane just right. simple human connection mm -hmm. um, that's really the big premise of the film and well and like yeah. you said uh, you were saying earlier you know you have to uh, or I guess I said it earlier was that as you uh, have grown as a filmmaker okay. you've learned to focus you know draw down your scale and right. focus on character and right. this is a great example of right. you know just a very small personal story between right. two people well see that's the biggest thing because you know i have so many random ideas for films that pop into my head every day almost and like mm -hmm. some of them i'm like man i wish i could make that film with 500 zombies chasing this guy and you know mm -hmm. the cheerleader just, with the crossbow right or, or the cheerleader with the crossbow <laughs> maybe not me but you know someone but you know it's just one of those things where um you know you have to look at the resources you have available and you know a lot of times you don't have 
the scope for that film that you right. want to make. And then you say, well, that's not a bad thing because you know I have this means within I can make any project. Mm -hmm. And I look within that you know kind of bubble and I say, okay, I can make this film and then expand out. Limitations can actually be really right. helpful. You well, know, see, that's the thing. That limitations aren't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think people think limitations are the, the death of film, but in a way, when you work within some limitations, it opens up new ideas that you weren't seeing before. Right, you gotta be more resourceful. Right, and that's definitely what we did with this film. I mean, uh, like I said, the biggest thing was when I was in Las Vegas, there was a guy who had a sign that said, don't want money, don't want food, just talk to me. And that's something that was really interesting. Really? Yeah, wow. and that was just so weird because, you know, normally, if you see someone with a sign, they need something from you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, with very good reason, of course. But, you know, it was interesting. So I actually, I talked to the guy and he told me he'd been in Las Vegas since 1983 like, and he came and gambled his money away and just never left. And this is his oh, lifestyle wow. now. And so it was interesting because he didn't seem to have any, you know, like mental issues. I think a lot of times people think homelessness, they always have to have something like very wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are just people that have fallen into a bad circumstance in their life or, you know, just for one reason or another, something didn't work out. Right. And then they've just landed here. And so it's I, a tough hole to dig your way out of. Well, see, and that's the thing. And then once you're there, it's really hard to get out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important just to show that they are still people and they don't lose their right. humanity. And so that's kind of the biggest thing I wanted to delve into with this film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to show more or less an interaction that probably wouldn't occur, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. what if two people just took a chance? And so right. that's where I put the film. So. so how long did it take you to write the script? The script I started with the, well, actually, I've had the idea, like I said, for the last couple of years, but I really started delving into the writing process in late 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the beginning of 2014 in like January, I had a script. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited to have the script, went through some revisions, and by February, we were shooting the film. And so it was really exciting to shoot the film. Um, like I said, we got a great local cast. I got some of my uh, buddies from the ECU film program to shoot it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just rolled with it. You know, we had a Canon 7D, pretty simple sound equipment. You know, it wasn't a fancy, you know, lineup of equipment, but it's kind of one of those things, once you know your limitations, it was perfect for what we needed. Right. Uh, we didn't need to have a red. I mean, it wouldn't have hurt, but you know, at the same <laughs> time, we, you know, we didn't need it. Right. So, you know, we had the story, we had everything planned out. I did the pre-production, talked to my crew, talked to my cast, and we were there, we were ready to go. We shot it in downtown Greenville and uh, kind of in the nature part on the outskirts of Greenville. Okay. So it has this really interesting look, in my opinion, just because uh, the landscapes and locations we used were very like dilapidated and kind of mm -hmm. lended itself to the theme of the film, in my opinion. I thought it was, it, it almost looked like the whole film was shot during the golden hour. Yeah. Which, I mean, first of all, did you do that? More or less, um, and if, sort of. If you, yeah. if you did, ish, um, how difficult is that? Because that's a very small window. Yeah. That's like a half hour to an hour every yeah. day you get to shoot. And to try to piece a film together, an entire film, no matter what length, a half hour at a time yeah. is pretty daunting. Right. Well, I think the golden hour, I mean, you know, speaking as a filmmaker, I'm sure all you guys know this, everyone knows this, it's like the best time to film. Oh, it's amazing. It. Yeah. I mean, every filmmaker just has a crush on the golden hour. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I was. I wanted to shoot within the golden hour as much as possible. You know, we shot the film over three days. Um, so we couldn't, you know, shoot within the window of the golden hour exclusively just because we needed more time than that. Right. So we tried to engineer, you know, early mornings and then take little breaks throughout the day and then keep shooting. And then we got to the golden hour at the end of the day with the sunset. Mm -hmm. And that's where we filmed kind of the finale of the film. And, um, but everything else was really color correction and li good lighting choices. Um, we had a great gaffer who really made smart, intelligent decisions with lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually lit the whole film with reflectors and just a fusion, oh, nice. no, no actual lighting. Did you have a DP yeah. or did you do that? Mm -hmm. We had a DP, Keith okay. Kelt, uh, he was great. Um, you know, I kind of storyboarded all the shots out and designed all the you know, technical stuff and then I showed it to him and then we worked on it together and then you know, he crafted it out and it was great. So okay. it was a lot of fun. So what was the, um, I guess both from, since you both <laughs> wrote, direct, or, well, you wrote, directed yeah. and edited the movie, um, what would you say was uh, the most difficult scene from any of the stages of the process? Like what was the hardest to write? Uh, what was the most difficult to shoot? And what was the hardest to get right in the editing room? Well, I'll put this in two different ways. Um, it can be different scenes. Yeah, yeah, two <laughs> different scenes because they're kind of tied for different reasons. Okay. Um, the probably toughest scene to film just from a, you know, logistical standpoint mm -hmm. was this the ending scene. I don't want to give it away, but basically two characters are meeting for the first time in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's a very emotional scene and you know very uh, you know ties everything together at the end of the film. 
It's also on the edge of a lake, so yeah. there's like a whole half of the side of the shot that you can't go. You know, you right. can't have somebody stand in right. the middle of a lake. We were on, yeah, I was thinking, it's on a lake, and we were on this little dock, and it was in a park. And mm -hmm. it was right at the end of the day, we, like I said, golden hour. And the problem was we, we needed more time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, that was the shortest shooting day, but also the most stressful in my opinion, just because of the limited amount of time we had with everyone's schedule right. and the park closing and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was still the winter hours, so they closed at like 5 p.m. So oh, that was man. really early. Um, so we were filming and we were almost done and this park ranger comes up, he's like, hey guys, you gotta leave, you gotta leave. We're like, hey man, can you give us like 10 more minutes? We're really shooting this film, you know, we really need the time. Are you, you know, we have people who drove from Wilmington to get here. Is there any way, you know, you can mm -hmm. give us five minutes? He's like, I'll give you five minutes, but really, after that, you've got to go. I'm like, yeah. all right, all right. And so we were filming. He's, and he's then, just a guy on the job. Yeah, he's, he's just a guy on the job. job. You know, yeah. I'm nothing against him. He was just doing his job. But, you know, we were just pleading, hoping we can get it done. Right. 20 minutes goes by. We're still making him wait. And he's like, guys, come on. He's like, do you got to keep going with this? We're like, five more minutes. We're all crew stressed out. We're like, get that light kit over here and get that, you know, microphone over there. Yeah. And like... We got it done, so it was, that's all that mattered. And uh, but it was a great time. And then I'd say the other film that was probably the most stressful part in the film to shoot, like the scene, was um, this like the, probably this really emotional scene where there was a little bit of like subtle crying and uh, revealing of pasts that were really you know troubling. And like the actresses did an amazing job on it. Like it was mm -hmm. just nuts how easily they were able to get to that like really deep dark place right. with like little to no preparation. I mean, it was just like we were here, we were losing light, and I was like. Do you guys need anything? They're like, no, we're good to go. And like, just rolled cameras there in it. Um, so that wow. part was not stressful. However, the only bad thing was we had a whole bunch of geese that were flying overhead and they kept quacking. And so we had to like wait for them and they'd be like diving into this super emotional material. And then you'd be like, rah, 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 and I'm just like, oh, come on. And like, so they, they figured it out and they were able to work and it, it, it all came mm -hmm. together. So. Just we have that trouble around here sometimes. Someone will be in the middle of a really great story mm. and then the train goes by. It's like, all right, everybody stop for five it's minutes. Like, all right, we're redoing this. Yep. Um, so basically, Try to get back in that headspace again. <laughs> right, right. I would just say, pro tip, avoid geese and park rangers and you'll be set. Right. So, that would be it. So now when it comes to the writing of the thing, um, I, you know, I was asking yeah. what, what was the hardest scene uh, to write also. Mm -hmm. you, I, one thing that I liked was... Um, you had some really good dialogue. Thank you. Thank and you. it can be really tough, you know, early on. You know, I, I know this from, from from experience and also from, you know, other people's movies that I've seen. It's really hard to get dialogue right. Uh, you kind of have a tendency to, well, I mean, sometimes dialogue's just bad, but also one of the problems you run into is sometimes um, you tend to over-explain stuff. Right. So how do you try to strike that balance between uh, telling too much mm -hmm. and not telling enough and also figuring out how the characters are going to say that so they're not just saying what they're thinking all the time. Right. Well, I think that's the that's the big mystery, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I'd say with writing, you know, I, I kind of approach everything personally. I, I would love to write direct most everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've directed a couple of things I didn't write and, you know, I'll definitely be open to that in the future, but I really love write directing combination, right. you know. The combination is great. I love developing from start to finish, seeing mm -hmm. it through. And so basically whenever I write, I try to think, what is it going to be like when I'm on set filming this? Mm -hmm. You know, I try to, to limit myself. Like I said, limitations can actually be really good. Right. Um, I think people have a negative connotation of what a, like, a limitation can do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the key thing with dialogue, just being more specific, is to try to just get in and out as quick as possible. Right. Um, people's attention spans are a lot shorter than you think. You know. They get shorter and shorter mm -hmm. as time goes and, on. And you know, that's the thing. So you always got to cater in a weird way, whether you want to or not, just something you got to keep cognizant of. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, like you said, you don't want to over-explain because you want to get the subtleties right. And it's a really interesting combination of your writing, your acting, and your directing, just all coming right. together and tying a nice bow on it. Well, when you're making a film, it's yeah. a visual medium. It is. So what can you show right. rather than having people right. say? Well, and that's the interesting thing because within a, a, like a short film, you know, we only had 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. We don't have a feature, so we can't, sometimes you can't be as subtle and drawn out because right. you're just in such a small window of time. So you have to think, even though we're in a small window of time, we can't just say, this is how I'm feeling, and then that's it. Like, right. you gotta have the subtlety still be there. So it's almost harder within the short mm -hmm. film format. And so I think the thing is, like, with this character-driven film that we did, Displacement Welcome, you know, it's, we have these characters that have all these emotional tangles in their life, you know, all this stress and all this stuff, and you, you, you show that throughout the film and hint to it, 
but you don't reveal that until the end. Uh -huh. So that's the thing. You don't want them just to say, hello, this is my baggage. Like, you don't ever want that. Exactly. So, you know, you, that's not interesting. It, right, right. You got to draw it out. And you always, the biggest thing with writing and biggest tip I guess I could give is like, keep the mystery there. Like, keep, give people a reason to not know. Because if you give them everything, then they're, they're done. They're like, okay, right. we, we've seen this X, go check Facebook. You know, you That's one of the them, things yeah. like Quentin Tarantino figured out really right. early on is that if you start in the middle, like, yeah. his stuff's always out of order. And it's because he figured right. out early on that if you start with some big action beat in the middle uh -huh. of the movie and then go back to the beginning, people start out the movie mm -hmm. going, wait, what the heck just happened yeah. and how did we get there? And right. so you got them hooked from the beginning. Well, see, and that's the thing. Spoilers don't actually matter as much as you think they do. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't care what happens. They just want to see how it happens. Right. And um, with this film, we kind of did bookends. Mm -hmm. And so the beginning of the film is actually, well, yeah, I mean, it's not a huge spoiler, but the beginning of the film is actually taking place at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. So you don't know that the first time you watch it. Right. But then when you get to the end of the film, it kind of makes sense. And then everything you watch just completely changes. Yeah. And then you interpret it completely differently. And then you say, oh, OK, this makes a little more sense. So I always like to have those oh, aha moments within anything I do. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Quentin Tarantino, I like to keep people guessing and you know, shake up the format a mm -hmm. little bit. Plus, bookends are just so much fun, in my opinion. Right. So. And you don't, you, don't want to, you don't want it to all be yeah. about the twist or some right. weird uh, yeah. You know, you don't. You don't want to rely on it too right. much. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is that a movie that relies heavily on the twist, that mm -hmm. big thing at the end, is that it doesn't. You know, a lot of times it doesn't have a lot of rewatch right. value right. because the whole point is that you didn't know what was going on. Right. Well, see, and that's the thing. I didn't want the twist. I want it to be an oh aha moment, but at the same time, I never wanted it to be shock value. Right. You know, because if it's just purely shock value and there's no lead up to it, mm -hmm. all the drama and the emotions they're meaningless. So. so I'm sure uh, this will be the last yeah. writing question, but I guess could also apply to editing or whatever. Sure. Um, I'm, I assume you got feedback from other people yeah. along the mm -hmm. way. What was the best bit of advice you got from someone or the best bit of feedback? Oh, man. Um, I would just say the probably the best bit, I guess, bit of feedback we had uh, right when I finished like the first rough cut of the film. I was showing it to one of my film professors, mm -hmm. um, Michael Tierno, a really good writer based out of New York now. He's doing all kinds of really cool stuff. But okay. I, mean, I sent it to him and he sent me some notes and he told me, he said, you know, there were a few things, you know, he had issues, not issues with, you know, a couple ideas, suggestions. But then right. the thing that he told me in a positive light, he goes, I just love how these characters are just so subtle. And he said, like, they don't really ever wear their heart on their sleeve. They're just, right. they're guarded. They're not that's, saying what they're thinking mm -hmm. all the time. Right. He said they're guarded because that's how they would be. Like, if, uh, if you just met a homeless woman who has, like, 30 years of emotional baggage, she's not going to wear her heart on her sleeve and tell you stuff. Right. She may be wanting to connect, but at the same time, she's going to have to take a little while to get there. So that was one of the cool compliments I got, I guess, on it. And uh, I was, you know, always happy to hear positive feedback. So. Cool. Yeah. So you get the thing shot. Yeah. And you start editing it. How long did it take to edit? The edit actually took a little while. Um, we finished the film in about a month. It was shot over three days, but it was well, actually not a month, like two now weeks. This is all a volunteer thing. You didn't yeah, have Yeah, everything was volunteer. We had okay. no financing for this one. So while we had financing for Spaz Out, we didn't have anything for this one. And, uh, well, you don't totally... have to worry about making back your budget then. Right, right. <laughs> well, it's interesting because we actually did an Indiegogo after the fact. And we got money for film festivals and promotion, which is you know, oh, a okay. large weird thing that I've never done. I've always done it pre-film. And that doing work. it post was interesting. Because I'd be, I, I, you know, like you said, normally when you see a Kickstarter yeah. or an Indiegogo, people are raising f money to make the movie. Right. It's not that common to see a movie that's already made looking to raise money for distribution or right. festivals or something. Well, see, and that's something I think that's really helped us, because I think this project has probably raised the most amount of buzz of any project I've done so far. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, you know, blessed and fortunate for that. But it's interesting because going into it after the fact with the Indiegogo was, you know, we had a product to show. We had the trailer right. and, you know, we did the little kind of documentary style like this. You know, we, mm -hmm. I was on camera, the cast was on camera, you know, we pitched the film. But more or less we said, you know, and here's the trailer. It wasn't anything abstract or vague. People knew what they were getting into. If you liked right. it, you could donate. If you didn't, you didn't. And right. So, when you're trying to raise money for the movie, yeah. first you have to convince people that you're capable yeah. of making it and you really don't have anything to show them except right. maybe if you have some past work you can show right. that you're talented right but you but know they are see specifically you know? right and they're putting money into right. something hoping that a final product happens Absolutely. where in your case movies there they can yeah. watch the heck you probably have it 
online already. Yeah, well, right now, actually, it just released this right, past Right, it, 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 uh, mm -hmm. it did release, so people yeah. can go see it on, uh, is it Vimeo or YouTube? Vimeo. Vimeo. Um, you right. can go on Vimeo, you can go on, Displ the easiest is just go to displacementwelcome.com. Mm. So we got a domain, and mm. uh, you cool. can just watch it all there. So it's really cool. And we actually just got into the uh, Euster Online Film Festival based out of oh, Switzerland. Awesome. So that's really exciting. It's a pretty big fest for you know what we were looking into, mm -hmm. and a very big surprise. I was happy to get in, but um, that's also going to be distributed throughout there. It's going to be in the festival for a few weeks, and then after the festival, they put all their films online. It's kind of oh, like awesome. a little Netflix for indie films. So definitely check them out. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean that's uh, that's really cool to see. You're already getting it out there. Um, you're in a rare case where you shot it for so little no money that mm -hmm. you you know you don't have to figure out a way to make your money Re back on reinvest, it yeah but you you have decided to raise funds to to mm -hmm. try and get it out there we'll and get see, a lot of exposure and i think that's the thing you know people always talk about the three steps of production there's a fourth step and it's called distribution right and people don't know about it or think about it enough i think mm -hmm. and i didn't do that for my first few films i would just put them on youtube and call it a day and I think that's still very important to do. I mean, like I said earlier, stress the online release, but at the same time, you know, get your social media going, Twitter, Facebook, you know, anything you got to do, mm -hmm. do the interviews, do press. I mean, like, and you want to yeah. do one thing that I found is that with the social media stuff is that you want to go ahead and get started early, early on. Yeah. You know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to, to uh, open up your Twitter account, you know, register a Twitter account the day before, the you day before you're going to yeah. release it. You need to be yeah. building up. Well, see, and excitement. that's the thing with Displacement Welcome. We were really fortunate. We released the Twitter and Facebook like a week after the film was, you know, in the can. So uh -huh. we had some promo footage, you know, I had a friend of mine, Alex Coles, who did photography. He had, you know, nice posters and pr production stills. So we had like some stuff to put up. And, yeah, but more or less we had like really cool promo stuff we could use. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it really helped to build a following and then we like partnered with people, you know, we had I think seven or eight months pre-release before the film came out that we were uh -huh. doing, you know, plugs and promo and connecting with people online. Right. And so we found all those people early on and so those are the people that helped us, you know, now while we're releasing the film. Mm -hmm. And it's going pretty good so far? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, we um, got like 500 views in the first like three days and you know, oh, for cool. anything else I've done, it's it's taken a longer time to get to that point. Right. So, you know, hopefully it keeps growing from there and like the film festivals and, you know, buzz we're doing is going to just keep growing infinitely. So hopefully that's the plan. Well, that's fantastic. So people can, so it's free online yeah. Vimeo right now. People right can now. go watch it there. Are you yeah. going to put out a, a DVD or anything? At some yeah, point? well, um, I've actually got a few DVDs made and we actually have like bonus features and we actually have like a 15 minute little behind the scenes documentary of making the film. Oh, okay. And I'll probably put that online at some point down the road, but for the moment I want to kind of keep that exclusive on the DVD. So hopefully what we're going to do is uh, we're actually planning a couple screenings right now. We're planning some local screenings here in Raleigh. We're hopefully getting one in Wilmington and then one in Greenville. Okay. And those were like the three cities. We shot the film in Greenville. We have a lot of support back here in Raleigh and then a lot of our actors are from Wilmington. Mm -hmm. So that's like this maybe tri-city tour we're trying to do, you know, nice. self-screen and all that. And uh, hopefully we'll have some of those DVDs that we can give out or sell or do something with at those screenings and uh, kind of get to the people who are interested. Cool. And um, one thing I really want to do with the screenings is make them all benefit. I don't want to make any money. I want to pretty much just make these films and the screening within the film mm -hmm. uh, benefit like different homeless shelters within the area. Oh, okay, yeah. So I think that'd be kind of an interesting yeah. way to kind of come full circle with it mm -hmm. and uh, use it, you know, to kind of make a little change that's positive. Good. I like that idea. Yeah. Well, that's cool. If you're uh, if you're interested in ide this idea, Displacement Welcome is uh, available on Vimeo now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're watching this several years in the future, seek it out somewhere because... Rocksetproductions.com. Rocksetproductions.com. <laughs> it's a really interesting movie. It's different from uh, most of the indie films you'll see out there. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. Awesome. Thanks Thank for talking you. to us. Absolutely.